what you want to do in us and through us. Bless Brother Robert, bless Brother Rick, and Lord, the music, may it stir our hearts, may the Word of God pierce our soul, and may we be encouraged to enter this holiday season. We thank you for it. We ask it now in Jesus' name. Amen.
Hey, man, good evening, and welcome to Community Bible Baptist. My name is Rick Campbell, and I feel like a, like an old friend. <coughs> My family has sung here a couple times, so uh, I guess I'm old home folk. Amen. And uh, we can't have a Christmas Eve service without everybody standing and singing at least one Christmas carol. So I'm going to ask you, if you would, to stand on your feet, and we're going to sing, O Come All Ye Faithful. The words will be on the screen, or if you prefer, it's page 138 in your hymnal. channel. This is the Christmas spirit. This is the Christmas meaning. We're going to listen to what the Word of God says, what Christmas is tonight. So we're going to be doing some reading uh, out of Luke chapter 2 and uh, listening to Pastor Bob McGill from Liberty Baptist and his interpretation of some Christmas music.
And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth into Judea, under the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child.
And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn.
same country shepherds, abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you was born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. Suddenly, there was with the angel a great multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us.
And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told to them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at the things that were told to them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart.
shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, as it was told unto them. Please stand with me as we sing our final song, The Great Christmas Carol, Silent Night.
be seated for just a moment. Appreciate so much, Brother McGill and Brother Ray, these beautiful songs. And of course, there's nothing better than the Word of God. The last phrase in that famous hymn, Silent Night, where it said, Jesus, Lord, at thy birth. The Lord Jesus Christ is the only baby to ever make his own birth announcement. All the rest of our births, a mother and a father told the world, our child is coming. But the Lord Jesus, way back in the book of Micah, way back in the book of Isaiah, way back in the Old Testament, in fact, Isaiah, 700 years before his birth, the Lord said, I am coming. In fact, the name Emmanuel, God with us, means the Lord becoming present with man. This morning, our text of Scripture was Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, verse 7. Let me read that to you, and I will not uh, preach long at all. I just want to give you one thought to go home on. For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the last title given our Lord Jesus is the Prince of Peace. The Prince of Peace. There is a peace that God gives to the believer in this time of year. It's magnified when the world, when their issues are magnified, their troubles are magnified. I, I know that you know this statistic. I don't have to give it to you. But the rise of homicides and the rise of suicides dramatically increase during the Christmas season. Now for the believer, this is a time of rejoicing, a, a time of celebration. The Prince of Peace has come. And yet more people during this time of year will take someone's life or take their life than per capita any other time of year. Do you know why that is? Because they sing the carols about the Prince of Peace, but they've never met the Prince of Peace. See, in order to have the peace of God... You must first make your peace with God. And that only comes by humbling yourself, recognizing you're a lost sinner bound for an eternal devil's hell, but realizing and accepting that this babe in a Bethlehem, the child that was born was the son given so that you and I might have redemption from sin. I'm like you. I am the typical father. My uh, years ago, one of our good men, in fact, uh, I love him dearly. I, I can't hardly speak his name without tearing up. He's in heaven now. But Brother Shelley Walker was uh, a rather uh, jovial man. He was a little bit heavy set. And, uh, we, we had a wonderful 12 year run together of him being Santa Claus and me being the Grinch that tries to steal Christmas. Uh, he wanted to dress up and play Santa Claus, and I wanted to, to be the Grinch and just sh uh, shut everything down. Because uh, I'm like most dads, why are we spending the money? We don't have the money to buy presents they're not going to play with, and a month later we're going to find them out in the yard anyway, so let's just save the time and throw the money in the yard. It would be much easier. <laughs> but I loved Brother Shelley. Every year he wanted to make a big deal out about, about Christmas. And I learned over those 12 years, it wasn't the gifts, and it wasn't the presents, and it wasn't all. But Brother Shelley had learned to love the Lord Jesus Christ. And he demonstrated that love by loving his family and his friends and giving gifts and celebrating. You know why? Because when he was a little boy, he found the Lord Jesus and made peace. And this was a great time to express that. But like most of us, we get so caught up in the, the events and the holiday traditions and the parties and the families and the presents and the buying and the going and the selling. No wonder we sometimes miss the fact that without Him there is no peace. May I make a suggestion to you? May I make two or three and I'll be done? Number one, if you don't know this Prince of Peace, you've missed the whole point of every song sung and everything done in these holiday seasons. The world does a very good job of putting on productions about Christmas, and yet they've missed the whole message of Christmas. If you don't know Christ, you don't understand that this child that was born was really born that he might be the son given. And if you're here tonight and you don't know Christ, and, and then you say, Pastor, I don't know what that means. Let me give you a very clear uh, test that you can either pass or fail right now. If you were to die tonight, ask yourself the question, if I died right now, Heart attack, stroke, car wreck on the way home, 
some other crazy thing happened that you weren't expecting, but you were to die before tonight was over, would you be allowed into God's heaven? If you say, I don't know, then the answer to the question is, you don't know the Prince of Peace. Because the Prince of Peace gives peace not only in this life, but really the life to come. Jesus himself said, I've come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. If I die tonight, which I'm not hoping to do, I'm not planning on doing. But if I die tonight, I would know this. As a little boy, I asked Jesus to come into my heart and save me. Now, I didn't understand theology back then. I, I didn't understand the sovereignty, and I didn't understand uh, salvation and grace. All I knew was this. Uh, that teacher who happened to be my mother, she said, if boys and girls die without Jesus Christ, and they know better, they understand right from wrong and sin, and they, they understand there's a penalty, and they don't accept Christ, those little boys and girls will die without Jesus and go to an awful place called hell. And, and I didn't know all the theology, and I didn't understand all my soteriology and all my other ologies that I learned later in seminary. But I understood this. If I want to go to heaven, all i got to do is ask Jesus. And I didn't understand it all, but, man, I believed it all, that Jesus loved me enough to die on that cross for me and enough to pay a sin that he did not owe to give me everlasting life that I could never pay for. And as a little bitty boy, I asked the Lord to come into my heart and save me. Since that day, now to be honest, and you know this from my own testimony, I haven't always lived for Him. But I've always known that if I died, I'd go to heaven. Now friend, that's peace. Because it doesn't matter what life has, what matters is what happens after life. It is appointed unto man once to die. And after this, the judgment. And a man that doesn't know Christ as his Savior, I promise you, you're going to have all this world has to offer, but you will have no peace. Because the Bible makes this statement, what shall it profit a man if he gained the whole world but lost his own soul? Or what would a man give in exchange for his soul? You know, I know a lot of rich people who have no peace. I know a lot of poor people that have great peace. Because peace is not about what you have or what you get or what you give. Peace is about who you know. And every song played tonight and every verse of Scripture pointed to the Prince of Peace. So the first thing I'd give you tonight is this. If you don't know Christ, before the evening is over, would you let someone take an open Bible and show you what it means to know the Prince of Peace? But second of all, could I give you just one very practical, very simple piece of advice? Slow down. Slow down. You don't have to do it all. There's no rule book that says you have to go everywhere, do everything, buy everything. We've become so commercialized, we forget the joy of just simply being with our family, celebrating the birth of our Savior. Uh, don't spend so much on jingle, bill, uh, jingle bells that come January you're trying to juggle bills. Your kids, you know what they want more than anything else, Daddy? They want your love and approval. I was in my office today, a precious, precious family. I love them so dearly. I'm so thankful to be their pastor. And we're talking about a family situation, a burden. And, and she said, Pastor, I, I just grieve. And she explained. And, and my wife and I were in there with her. And, and, and I said, you know what? All they want is a little love from their daddy. You can't buy that, Dad. Mom, all they want is a little approval. You think that if you buy them the next toy or the next gadget, by the way, if you have an extra connect, I'll take it. <laughs> but, but you think the next game or the next thing, really, they would like just to spend some time with, with me. My kids want some time with their dad and my kids want some time with their mom and they don't want to be running all over the place. So I'm going to give my kids that for the next eight hours. We're going to be in the van together. <laughs> Quality downtime. But slow down just a little bit. Would you, would you make an effort in the next couple of days? You don't have to go to work and, and you don't have to run all over the place. Just spend some time with your kids. Talk to them. A few weeks ago, I was talking to my oldest son. And, and I said, son, what, what do you, have you he, he has a, he's a junior in high school. I said, son, have you given thought to, to what you want to do after school? And, and he said, yeah, dad, I'm really thinking about uh, physics. And I said, huh? 
He said, yeah, I really enjoy science. And, and to me, that, that just makes no sense. I, I can't make heads or tails of any of that. That wasn't any of my strong point. And, and he said, yeah, I, I think I, I'd like to get into physics. My first thought was, what does a physicist do to make a living? And he said, oh, you can go into science and you can go into to all these other things. And, and I'm like, really? You know, you know how I learned that? I just asked him a question and he gave me an answer. But you don't get that if you don't have any time. Have you figured out that the more we get cell phones and the more we get email and Twitter and Facebook and all these other technological advances, the more we can communicate, the less we actually communicate? Could I give you just a piece of advice to enjoy the holiday, get a little peace in your life. Here's a wonderful idea. Turn it off, put it down, walk away from it. The Prince of Peace. The Bible says, be still and know that I'm God. I, I just would encourage you the next few days just to, to slow down a little bit. We live in a rapid world, a fast-paced world that always is going and coming. And there's just something that's missing from so many of us to enjoy the peace, the stillness of knowing Christ is our Savior. Heaven is our home. Hell is forever closed. The church is our family. The Bible is our book. The Holy Spirit is our comforter. Jesus our Savior and the Father our God. Listen, just be still and know that He is God. I would encourage you tonight, if you don't know Christ, come and accept Him. If you know Christ but you found yourself caught up in all the, the craziness, just, just unplug for a few days. And know that this Christ child, this babe, this child that was born, so thankful that son that was given. If you're saved tonight, as I know that, that many of you are, there's just something about rejoicing in your salvation. Not an arrogant thing, not a prideful thing, but such a wonderful thing to know that I know the Lord Jesus Christ. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Nobody's going to move at all. Even our workers are going to stay steady. Nobody's looking. If you were to be honest with the Holy Spirit of our God, and you were to ask yourself the question, do I know for sure if I died tonight that I'd go to heaven? If you say, Pastor, you know, I asked myself that and I don't know. What should I do? I, I would tell you to simply... Look at the Word of God where the Bible says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The Bible tells us there's none righteous, no, not one. The Bible tells us really that even our good things in God's sights are just filthy things. The best we could do for God would be our own good works, and God says that's not acceptable. I would encourage you to look at the Bible that says there's nothing you can do but the Lord loved us. John chapter 3 in the 16th verse simply says this, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. John chapter 1 verse 12 says, But as many as received Him, to them gave He power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on His name. Here's what happened. Christ came. He lived a perfect sinless life. He died a horrible death in your place, taking your sin before God. And God punished him. But on the third day, he arose victorious, offering us eternal life. That if we would believe, the word believe more than, means more than just mental assent to the fact there is a God. The word believe means rely, depend, trust on, trust in. That's put your hope in Christ. Believing Him. You'd say, Pastor, I've never done that. May I simply tell you, to believe in your heart is one thing. To confess in your mouth simply means to tell God you agree with Him. You believe what He says. You're a sinner deserving of an eternal hell, but that Christ loved you and died for you, and you're asking Him to forgive you of your sin. Prayers do not save people. I don't know if you know that or not, but prayers and good works, that's something we do. What saves people is the believing in our heart that God hath raised him from the dead. And then confessing with our mouth. If you're here this evening, you could simply tell God, Lord, I'm a sinner. And I'm asking you to forgive me of my sin. And I believe you died on the cross. You were buried and you rose again for me. 
that I might have everlasting life. And as best I understand, I'm asking you to save me. Now, there's much more after that, not to be saved, but because you're saved. But let me ask you a question in this moment. Nobody moving around, nobody talking, nobody doing anything. Just still for another 30 seconds. Pastor, I don't know Jesus Christ as my Savior. Would you pray for me? Nobody's going to come to you. Nobody's going to bother you. But let me pray for you. Pastor, I don't know Christ as my Savior. Please pray for me. Would you slip your hand up anywhere in the building? Front to back, left to right, all over. Just a moment. God bless, just a moment. Second question is this. Is there peace in your life? I say, preacher, there's, there's far from peace in my life. You know, the Bible says for the believer that the Lord wants to give that abundant life. Maybe you're not right with Him this Christmas season. Maybe you've gotten into some sin that you've not confessed and you've not forsaken. Maybe, maybe you've walked away from Him. The greatest present that you could give or receive this year would be a right relationship with your Heavenly Father. And if you're here, you're saved, and by your testimony, you're telling me, I know the Lord. Then let me ask you simply this. Are you right with Him? Are you in the center of His will? Have you surrendered all to Him? That's the best peace a man can have is to be right with God. In fact, that's the peace that passes all understanding. I want to give you an opportunity. I want to let Pastor McGill just play softly. Let's stand to our feet. Heads are about, eyes are closed. If you're here tonight and you don't know Christ as Savior, why don't you come? I'm here. Others are available. Or if you're a Christian who's missed the peace of God, fallen out of that right relationship, we'll just play through a verse or two, have Rick sing. Why don't you step out of your place? Why don't you come? If it's you, you step out of your place, you come. Pastor Robert just plays softly. It's the end of the new year. We'll start a brand new 2013. Obviously, the world didn't end. We're all here. Dad, what are you going to do different this year in your home? Mom, what, what are you going to do different this year? What are you going to do for Christ this year? I'm not a big fan of New Year's commitments. We tend to forget them almost as soon as we make them. But you know, I am a big fan of committing ourselves to the Lord. Maybe as we close this year, it be a good week of evaluation. Maybe, maybe, Dad, you would say, I'm going to be more faithful to bring my family to the house of God. Maybe you'd say, as a mom or dad, I'm going to be more faithful to have family altar and devotions. Maybe I'm going to be more faithful as a witness at my work. Maybe, Dad, you need to just say, I'm going to cut back a little on the extra things and just spend some time at home with mom and the kids. It's always an opportunity for us to check and balance ourselves. Use these next few days to reflect on the year past and to pray for the year to come. 2012 was a great year for our church. A lot of people saved, a lot of people baptized, a lot of people joined the church. We've, we've enjoyed the year so much. There's things I want to improve on as a daddy and as a husband. Pastor, we'll sing the last verse or whatever verse you have of I surrender all. The thought is this. We enter into this season. What do we have yet that we haven't surrendered? Think about that. And then our ushers will come. Let's sing that. I bow worldly pleasures all for 
forsaken. Dear Jesus, take me now. I surrender all. All to Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. All God's people said. How many of you enjoyed Pastor Bob tonight? Would you let him know it by a good round of applause? What a blessing. Amen. And, and I just want you to know, I'm astonished. Brother Rick can read. What a blessing. Amen. Praise God. But uh, this family is a blessing. They sing uh, two or three times a year. We try to get them over here for special events. And just so thankful for uh, the Campbells and the Taylors appreciate them. Brother Bob, uh, we had a staff meeting while you were playing back there. We're going to book you again for next year. So we appreciate this so much. Uh, if you're a member of our church, this is our time to worship and giving. If you're one of our many, many guests tonight, we're so thankful that you're here. Uh, no pressure at all on the giving. This is for our church uh, to give. We're going to take a second offering tonight. This is our, our birthday offering for the Lord Jesus. And I'll explain that more in a moment. But uh, we take a special offering every year just for Christ. And we designate it to a ministry. And uh, this year it is our ministry 226 based out of Proverbs 226. And I'll explain that in just a moment. But this is our regular offering, our time of giving, our, our faith promise missions, and uh, our regular giving. So let's pray. We'll receive our offering. Then, Brother Steve, if we'll reset and we're going to receive our Christmas offering. Father, thank you tonight for what we've seen, what we've heard, what we've experienced. We pray your blessing now on this Christmas week in Christ's name. Amen. You may be seated. God bless you as you give.
Amen. Amen. Wonderful. This offering is a, uh, appreciate that so much. I, I'm glad I could teach that to you. What a blessing. Uh, I worked for weeks and weeks. I'm glad you caught that. Uh, this week, now this is, a no, this is a, not a normal week, but almost a normal week. Uh, our 226 ministry, which is our, our children's program based on Proverbs 226, training up children. Outside of our local church, now this is not church kids. These are kids either through our good news clubs, our Bible clubs in the public school. We have anywhere from 75 to 100 plus kids each week uh, in our Bible club. We run three different Bible clubs on uh, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. Then Wednesday night, we had over 140. These are non-church kids. These are kids we bring in on buses. We had over 140 teenagers and kids that we had a Christmas party for. Every kid got a gift, and they also got a copy of the book Done, which tells the plan of salvation to give to their parents. Then on Saturday, our teens and our single adults went out and ministered over 100 kids. They're in a transient hotel here on 19. So just this week, well over 300 plus kids, not connected to our church, were reached with the gospel. Many of those kids have come to Christ, and that's what we do. We have, we have decided the Lord willing will start a fourth bus route on Wednesday nights just to pick up uh, some of these kids that are staying uh, in some of these transit hotels. It's, it's an easy pickup if you understand 19, they're all right here. And, uh, one room, now this is one hotel room. Our fellows knocked on the door, seven children plus mom and dad. They're not staying there like overnight. They're living in one room. And uh, when the mom and dad found out that we would take their children for about three hours on Wednesday night, they signed the release form. It was amazing. <laughs> so this offering, now if you are a guest tonight, you're welcome to participate in this. This is, goes right into our children's ministry. And uh, this is to help us reach boys and girls. And by the way, not to play on emotion or situation, but the reality of last Friday is why we're in the public schools. It's why we're trying to reach children now. Could you imagine if somebody could have loved that troubled teenager to Christ when he was a junior high student, may have saved 26 lives. So we're trying to reach these kids. We love jail ministry, but we'd like to reach them before then and get them while they're kids in school. So this offering is for our children's program. It's your Christmas offering. And every dollar of it goes right back into our ministry. God bless you as you give. you like to say a word about Bob's? Again, thank you for having us this evening. I wanted to take just a moment. Uh, Pastor Bob's got a little scratchy throat, so he asked me to uh, let you know about some CDs that he just put together. Uh, one of these CDs is almost all the music that you heard tonight. It's just music. Uh, if you're anything like me, I love all types of music, but there are times I just like to hear the music, not the words. Uh, he put this in. I've, I've got it on my iPod, doing the cleaning around the house. Just it's very relaxing. Uh, the second CD is uh, music. I, again, much of the music that you listen to tonight with the Christmas story interspersed throughout just the way we did it tonight. Uh, they make great stocking stuffers, and if I'm not mistaken, it's one CD for $12 and two for 20. That's not correct. One for 10 and two for 15. One for 10 and two for 15. That's a better deal yet. <laughs> so we just had the Kmart Blue Light Special. Again, thank you for having us. And Pastor, if you'll dismiss us with a word of prayer. If you, uh, if you are a member of our church, we'll have Wednesday night service, regular 7 o'clock, and then everything's on schedule for next week, so we look forward to a good week. But the office is closed this week, so if you need to get hold of us, call the church office. 
All the staff that is here uh, is available and just let the secretary know and they'll get hold of whoever you need. Then also, uh, don't forget the announcements from this morning. Uh, we've got several things coming up, the, the nursing home things and all that. So check your, check your activities. And then I did get word, uh, the Conti's again here tonight and our prayers are with Jack and Pat. Uh, but uh, the service is one o'clock Wednesday afternoon at Sorensen Funeral Home. That's correct, Joan, is that right? All right, so uh, Jack's service is, is one o'clock at Brother Rick's uh, and Brother Paul will be officiating. Unfortunately, uh, we'll be out of town. So you pray for that family and we rejoice that uh, Jack knew the Lord and uh, we'll see him again. But you pray for uh, Precious Joan and Precious Pat and that family. Also, the lady that uh, I buried her husband Wednesday was here visiting again this morning. Pray for Cindy uh, and uh, we're praying that she just find a church home here and uh, be a blessing. So you pray for her. She was visiting again today. Let's all stand together. And uh, Brother Doug, why don't you turn on the lights? We don't want folks to run over each other. And uh, somebody asked me, said, Pastor, are we all going to get candles to hold? And my answer was, are you crazy? <laughs> I love you. Have a Merry Christmas. God bless you. You're dismissed. Amen.